Hi everyone, so my name is Jake and today I wanted to talk about theme parks. Throughout the semester I have had the, the chance to go to Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure um, a couple times so I thought this would be a good opportunity to talk about some of the attractions there and share my experience with the parks uh, and their accommodations due to the global pandemic. So for those of you who maybe don't know, Universal is split into two different uh, theme parks. So the first one is Universal Studios and the second is Islands of Adventure. So both parks are filled with roller coasters, 3D motion coasters, interactive rides, shows, stores, and different places that um, represent different uh, locations in the world or like fantasies, locations, anything like that. Um, so first things first, since there is a global pandemic still going on, each and every guest is required to participate in a temperature check upon arrival before they head to security and being allowed to enter um, City Walk, which is Universal's area for shopping and dining that's open to the general public, regardless of whether or not um, you have a pass. It's kind of like they're downtown Disney. Um, so after walking about five to 10 minutes, you will have the choice to go either towards Islands of Adventure on the left or Universal Studios on the right. And on a normal day, personally, I like to start with Universal Studios because they tend to open earlier and then they close an hour earlier, which gives me a chance to do more stuff there and then jump on over to Islands of Adventure and do what I want to do there before they close. So once you scan your ticket at either park entrance, you can go anywhere you want um, within that park. And depending on the time of day, wait times might be different. Um, so it's pretty important to check those before you head in any specific direction, just so you know what you're getting yourself into. And each attraction and restaurant have enforced social distancing as well, uh, with parties being confined to blue markers on the ground to keep a safe distance from others, uh, as well as being sanitized before boarding every ride. And now when it comes to these attractions, there are several factors uh, to take into account when you choose one. And that's, are you looking for something intense and fast paced, uh, a fun show or a combination of the two? And so for those of you who are looking for something fast paced, uh, like a roller coaster, Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket, Revenge of the Mummy, and The Incredible Hulk are definitely the rides for you. Um, on Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket, you have the opportunity to select a classic rock or electronic or dance song um, and play it in the speakers behind you uh, in your seat while you go on the ride. Uh, and it launches you straight down from 167 feet right into a loop um, and it's pretty pretty awesome in my opinion. Uh, Revenge of the Mummy takes you through the set of the movie itself and has you encounter the mummy um, and you go through that whole roller coaster with acceleration, quick movements, all of that. And then the Hulk launches you straight into a loop um, from the launching center into several drops before bringing you back into the station. And then Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure both offer um, I guess like medium type rides for those of you who don't like the really fast paced stuff, but you still like roller coasters in general. Um, and these are scenic dark rides that involve a roller coaster type car um, that follows along a screen with something on it. Um, and sometimes it's three dimensional, but it really just depends. So examples of these are Spider-Man and Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. In Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, a robotic arm uh, actually moves the roller coaster car throughout the castle and places them in front of these dome screens that um, make you feel like you're actually inside the ride. Meanwhile, um, Despicable Me and Race Through the New York with Jimmy Fallon um, are along the same concept, but they let you stay in your seat and your seat stays in place as well um, in front of a large screen, so you're all in there together. Um, and these are three-dimensional, and the seats move to mimic the movement that's on screen and make you feel like you're there as well. Aside from rides and attractions, since not everyone's into that kind of stuff, um, the parks are broken into different themed areas. So there's Hollywood, New York City, San Francisco, Springfield, uh, Jurassic Park, Marvel, Seuss Landing, and the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, which includes Diagon Alley in um, Universal Studios and Hogsmeade and Islands of Adventure. And then there is a train. The Hogwarts Express does connect the two, so you can switch back and forth. And each of these lands has restaurants and shops inspired by their locations, which really enhance the experience and make it more fun to do, um, to walk around and see what the, um, each place has to offer. Um, so Universal truly has so much to offer and there's never too little to do there. Um, whether or not you prefer roller coasters or shops and restaurants and losing yourself in places that only existed before on a screen, Universal definitely has something for you. And I hope you guys have as much fun there as I do.